Greetings. Today's topic is Saudi Arabia building the end time city of Babylon. Please give me just a few moments here to give you the proof. Please do not immediately reject it just because it doesn't make sense to you. Just because you don't already agree doesn't mean that you can't examine the evidence. Saudi Arabia has announced on October 24th and 25th that they're going to build, actually already started building, a high-tech metropolis called Nome. If allowed to come to completion, it would be 33 times larger than New York City. 33 times larger than New York City. That is amazing. And also, if allowed to come completion, it would be 12 times larger than New Jerusalem. 12 times larger than New Jerusalem. And so this is huge, huge news. Uh, <clears throat> let's read in Revelation 17 what it says about the end time city of Babylon. In Revelation 17, verse 1, there came to me seven angels, which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying, Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Now, <clears throat> many waters can talk about, it may be speaking about many nations, but it's also literally also as well speaking about being uh, a seaport city on the banks of either the Mediterranean Sea or the Red Sea, a Middle Eastern body of water. And it says that the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Now, if you look at both Rome and the Roman Catholic Church and at Islam and Saudi Arabia and Mecca, Saudi Arabia and the capital of Saudi Arabia, both cities and both religions fit this description. Rome has committed fornication with all the kings of the earth and the Catholic Church has. But so has Islam and so has Mecca and so has Saudi Arabia. But look at the word drunk with the wine of her fornication. Talking about her sin, her false doctrines of a false religion. But if we remember that prophecy can both be at times, both literal and symbolic at times, that she sits upon many waters is both literal and symbolic. And drunk with her wine is both literal and symbolic. Thinking of the oil that Saudi Arabia is the number one exporter of oil in the world or up there in the top three now. And when it says that he was carried away in the spirit into the wilderness, the word, the Greek word for wilderness here can also be translated as desert. And if you think where John was and where everything in the Bible happens in the Middle East, it's not talking about forests of trees. It's not talking about in the woods. It's talking about in the desert. And this word can be translated as desert. In fact, the Alpha and Omega Bible does translate this as the word desert. And the woman set upon a scarlet colored beast. With names for blasphemy, seven heads and ten horns, talking about uh, seven empires throughout time in the Middle East and seven horns. And it says that um, that the woman is arrayed in purple and scarlet color, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. If you look at this, this kind of hints at a city and a kingdom and a nation that is rich, very wealthy with gold and precious stones and pearls and golden cup. And the royal family of Saudi Arabia is the richest uh, 
family in the world. The richest family, not talking about just one single person, but when you look at a family, uh, the dad, their sons, the family, the royal family of Saudi Arabia is the most wealthy in the world. If you look at Mecca, Saudi Arabia, uh, and the capital of Saudi Arabia as well, how wealthy that they are and uh, all the gold and all the statues and all the precious stones and the black stone of Mecca as well. And notice here that it calls her the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, meaning that this city uh, and this religious organization is a mother to other denominations, other false religions. If you look very closely at the symbolism, uh, symbols within Hinduism and the symbols within uh, Buddhism and the symbols within the Catholic Church, uh, all of this originates from Islam. And I will say that again because that's very significant. The symbols in Hinduism, Buddhism, and within the Roman Catholic Church all originate from Islam. Some people say that the Catholic Church created Islam, but that's not accurate. Actually, it's the other way around. The Catholic Church did not create Islam, but rather Islam created, gave birth to the Catholic Church because Islam existed before the Catholic Church existed. Now, a lot of people will argue with me about that. A lot of people... Uh, jump to conclusion and assume that Islam was created or founded by Muhammad, but that's not true at all. The fact of the record, we know for a fact that Islam already existed before Muhammad was even born. And Muhammad, only thing he did was write the Quran and change Islam from worshiping many gods, 2,000 gods, and narrowed it down to only the moon god, Allah. That is the fact, the historical record of history. So Islam already existed before Muhammad was born. And if you look at in the Old Testament times when people were uh, sacrificing their children to Moloch and to Zeus and the Greek gods and the Egyptian gods, all that came from a formal former, more agent religion, which was Islam. Islam was the worship of uh, the moon and the sun and the earth and witchcraft and Islam and the Catholic Church and all the sects and religions of this world. And all of that descended down from the Babylonian, from the Assyrian Empire into the Babylonian Empire, then into the Persian Empire, then into the Greek Empire, then into the Roman Empire, then into the Presbyterian, Lutheran, Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal, and all the isms and denominations of man's religions today. All of man's religions, all of man's denominations, all originate from Islam. So Islam is a mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Now, I'm not atheist. I am Christian. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. But I do not believe in any, in any denomination, in any ism, in any religion of mankind. I believe in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I am not Baptist. I'm not Pentecostal. I'm not Catholic. I'm not Protestant. I am not a denomination or a follower of man's religions. I am a follower of God himself, a follower of Jesus Christ himself. I am not denominational. I read the Bible and I follow God. Man's religions all originate from Islam. That's why you have uh, the worship of three gods. That's why you have pagan holidays. That's why you why the, the churches do not keep the true Sabbath and so forth. Now, this woman, Babylon and false religion, uh, was drunk with the blood of the saints and the blood of martyrs of Jesus. Who does that describe? Well, yeah, it does describe uh, the Catholic Church in Rome, the Vatican, the Pope. 
how they have martyred and uh, killed Christians from, for generations upon generations upon generations and forbid it, uh, people from having their own copies of the Bible and so forth. But their mother of the Catholic Church, Islam, is also responsible for the blood, blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And who is it that is beheading people upon the earth today? It is not the Catholic Church beheading people. It is not the Christians beheading people. It is not the followers of Jesus beheading people. It is Islam and Saudi Arabia that is beheading people and promoting uh, Islamic Jihad across the world and murdering people across the world. This is facts. This is not hate speech. This is the facts of what is occurring. This describes perfectly Saudi Arabia. Let's move on here. Uh, <clears throat> now it says here that Babylon sits on seven mountains. Now, this is both, again, both literal and symbolic. Now, some prophecy is only literal and some prophecy is only symbolic. But what we're seeing in this Revelation 17 is much of both. All these things being both symbolic and literal at the same time. These seven mountains symbolically refer to seven empires, which is very important but also refers to seven literal mountains. Now, people talk about Rome, that it was built on seven hills. However, the Greek word for mountains here does not refer to little tiny hills like they have in Rome, but it refers to actual high peaks, mountains, not hills. There's a reason why it's, why it is translated mountains. It is not translated as hills. Rome was only built on seven hills, not seven mountains. Now I'm going to show you a map of Saudi Arabia that shows you seven mountains. And then I hope I don't forget to show you uh, how that Rome was not part of the Babylonian Empire, and I will give you proof of it. This is a map of Saudi Arabia right here. You can see the land border with Jordan and Egypt. And this is mountain number one, Jabal al-Laws. Jabal al-Laws, 2,580 meters. Peak mountain, peak number one. Going down the map here, mountain peak number two, Mountain peak number three, mountain peak number four, number five, number six, and number seven. Seven main mountain peaks in Saudi Arabia. Absolutely amazing. Then let me show you a map of the Babylonian Empire. Let me pull this map back here a little bit where you can see it better and pull it back up for you. This is a map of the Babylonian Empire. Now, there are seven literal physical mountains, but symbolically it refers to seven empires. Daniel 2 says that Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylon, Babylonian Empire was the head of gold, one of the empires. Now, for, uh, for the end time city of Babylon to be the real city of Babylon and not a decoy and not a fake, but the real city of Babylon, it must have been located and still located within the original empire of Babylon. Makes plenty of sense, right? How can it be Babylon if it's not located within the Babylonian empire? Impossible. This map here, notice how Rome and the nation of Italy is not even on the map. It, Rome and Italy is off the map to the left, to the west of all this. Italy is not on the map. Rome is not on the map of the Babylonian Empire because it was not, was not part of the Babylonian Empire. 
Now, as part of some of the other empires of those seven mountains, but not all seven empires. Rome was not part of all seven empires. And for the real city of Babylon, you have to have it located in all seven mountains, in all seven empires. Rome does not fit that description. So it is impossible, impossible for Rome to be the real, true, end-time city of Babylon. Now, uh, of course, the Vatican and the Roman Catholic Church is part of spiritual Babylon, mystery Babylon. They are part of the world's religions. They are part of these harlots and abominations of the world. But Rome cannot be the physical, literal, end-time city of Babylon since it was not located in the original Babylonian empire head of gold. Now, more evidence why uh, this new city in Saudi Arabia is going to be Babylon is because uh, Revelation 17 and 18 has a connection with the book of Isaiah. If you look at Revelation, let's go to Revelation 18 for a second here. I know I'm going all the way up and down the page here, but I'm going to give you the address where you can read this entire article here in just a few minutes. All right, right here, seven, all right, Revelation 18, talking about when Jesus comes, angel says, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. It has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So when Jesus comes back, Babylon, the city, contains unclean birds, Revelation 18. If you compare that with Isaiah, Isaiah 13, verse 11, about unclean birds. And the context of verse 11 is the wrath of God and the coming of Jesus. Very clear. So now Isaiah 34 is talking about the very same event, same place and same day as Revelation 17 and 18, the destruction of Babylon. So realizing that, who is Isaiah 34 talking about? It's talking about Edom. Where is Edom? Edom is located on this map as being southern Jordan and northern Saudi Arabia, south of the kingdom of Judah, south of the Philistines, south of Jordan, in the same location where Saudi Arabia is building this new mega city, 33 times larger than New York, 12 times larger than New Jerusalem. Same location as Edom in Isaiah 11 and Isaiah 34. Same location as the destruction of Edom. So Edom is the end time city of Babylon and notice how the city is four letters, just like Edom is four letters. And the last two letters match perfectly. O, N, Edom, and, and Neom. Now, what is the purpose of this new city? Let's see what uh, Prince of Saudi Arabia said. The, the purpose is of the new city. Let me find it here for you, right here. The goal of Neom is to unite all the world as one people and one language. The same as it talks about in Genesis 11, about the original city of Babylon, that the goal was to make people of one people, to coexist of all religions and of all languages, which it was one language, 
So it was coexistence. And so the prince, Saudi Arabian, Saudi Arabian prince said, Neom is to be a world hub for everyone in the whole world. It is to bring people together of one language and religion. It says here that we didn't want an Arabic name and we didn't want a Latin name or a name from either other language because the project represents a civilization leap for humanity. So the name shouldn't be from a specific civilization. There was good names based on Latin. There was names based on Arabic. So it was difficult to decide. And as a workshop, we decided to dissect the first letters of the proposed names from the first letters of the main sectors and try to put them in a good sentence. We came up with Neo, which means new, and Mastaba, which means future. Neo future, new future. So right here they're saying that this is just like the original Babylon of one language. They didn't want it to be an Arabic language or a Latin language or a Hebrew language or a Greek language or an English language. They chose the name to merge languages into one and to be a one people and to be a world hub for everyone in the world. This is what Genesis 11 says. Notice Genesis 11 about the original first attempt of mankind to build Babylon. It says the whole earth was of one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shahar, and they dwelt there. Now, there's much debate about where Shahar is, but I believe that is talking about Saudi Arabia and the land of Jordan and Iraq and Iran, all of that was the plain of Shohar. And they said to one another, Go up, let us make brick, burn them through it. And they had brick and they had slime. And they said, Let us go up and build a city and a tire, build a city and a tire that reach up into heaven. Now notice here that when we typically think of the Tower of Babylon, that God knocked down and destroyed the Tower of Babylon. We usually think of only the tire. But this says not only was there a tire, but a city. And that they were building a city. This is very, very, very significant. This was the first attempt at building the city of Babylon. That there was both a city and a tire. The very tall tire that should go up into heaven. Saudi Arabia right now is building what is going to be the tallest building in the world. The tallest building in the world is being built right now in Saudi Arabia. So they're building both a tire that should reach into heaven, a skyscraper, and they are building a city, just like it was in Genesis 11. And it says here that they began to do this and that they imagined to do this so that's what they're doing right now. They're planning and they're imagining this to build it. And they've already started building and they did start building it in Genesis 11. Then God said, let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. And so the Lord scattered them abroad and from thence upon the face of the, all the earth and they left off building the city. They didn't finish building the original Babylon. This is very important because time is short and God will not allow them to build a city 12 times larger than New Jerusalem. Amen. God will not allow them to finish building this city 12 times larger than New Jerusalem because that is blasphemy. God will not allow it. Time is short. We are right now at the doorstep to the Great Tribulation. They don't have time to finish this, but they will accomplish a lot on it. They will build a lot on it, and it will become a great city, but they will not finish it to the extent of 12 times larger than New Jerusalem and 33 times larger than New York. 
And that's just common sense that we don't have enough time for them to finish building this. Jesus will come back first before they finish building that huge city. So the fact that they don't have time to build it and the fact that God won't allow them to finish it coincides with the fact that they did not finish the first city of Babylon either. So the destruction of the first city of Babylon was a foreshadowing and prophetic picture of the end time city of Babylon. Um, so there's there's these reasons and much more. I mean, this there's a ton of reasons. So I'd like for you to visit the website and read the entire article for yourself to, to look at all the evidence, not just what I've already shared with you in this short video, but look at all the evidence on this article at I saw the light ministries dot com slash Babylon dot HTML. And I'm going to put this link below the video as well. And you can read the article for yourself. Examine all the evidence before you make up your mind. Thank you for listening to me today. In Jesus' name.